Time to play with some clay. Well, I do have a little work to do on this uh, nice sheath, and I kept forgetting to do this, but uh, I've got to do it, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's about a quarter after six in the morning, and uh, I figure as long as I'm up, I might as well get to work on this, because in... 24 hours I'm going to have to get up and go to Jackson Hole now this isn't the final design I'm just uh, sticking these on here quickly just so that uh, there's some design to it I'll get much more detailed when I bring her home and Get her ready to go to the foundry. I noticed this last night in the uh, video. And uh, I knew I had to do something. One goes away and one comes in. Okay, I gotta paint that shield. I can't have people wondering, what is that? So, get my paint. First things first, put my boards down. So those of you not familiar with what I do here, I took a clay sample years ago to a hardware store to get a color of some house paint mixed to be the same color as the clay. And the reason I do that is because I paint any odd looking material like dark wax or or in this case uh, monster clay to make it look like clay and the reason I do that is because when you got it on display you don't want to have people constantly asking you why is that a different color this way we don't run into that problem and it doesn't hurt the uh, sculpture at all it uh, all comes out in bronze looking the same no matter what i do to it as long as i don't overdo the paint and have drips <laughs> that's the only time i might have a problem i got her hand to do i just realized that
Sounds like a rooster's crowing off in the distance. I am right next to a barnyard. This is a small tool, a little small wire tool. I got this off of uh, Ken's tools. Uh, these tools are really small because they are used in the movie production studios where they do sculpting and they want to get tight detail. They're really good for this type of stuff. Rooster is really vocal. Now, despite what you've seen in paintings and in movies, everyday life in a village, you would not have worn your beadwork on your dresses all the time. Because quite honestly, that was expensive stuff. So, I'm not putting beads on this dress. This is more of a utility dress, something that she would have done work in. The last thing you do work in is a dress that has a lot of beadwork, expensive beadwork, or even quill work. The Native Americans used porcupine quills as a decoration on their dresses before they got beadwork. And I actually greatly love porcupine quills over beadwork because they, they took a lot of work, very skillful, and uh, when done right and dyed, the colors that they would dye with some earth colors they're just literally beautiful. Got just a little kind of piece of clay I want to stick in this one hole right there. Alright, I'm going to put a little fringe on the end of her 
sleeve. Oh, my back is starting to hurt. <sighs> Getting old ain't fun. I'll be 75 next month. Holy cow. Holy cow. I never thought I'd get to 2000. <laughs> And yet here I am, 2020. All right, the last thing I got to do, well, next to the last, I'll show you what I mean by that, is fill in this cut in the uh, base where I could join the two bases together because we don't need to have that confusing people either. Now, he would not have had the money to buy or the trade goods to buy a uh, or trade for a, a good bridle. And more than likely, he would have taken one off of a cowboy or a soldier in battle and he hasn't been really in battles before this is kind of like his first one and his uh sweetheart was asked by his mom to take a blanket to him that's what he's got draped across his lap it is the blanket she's brought for him because he took off out of the teepee without thinking about taking off blanket and the mother seeing a chance to maybe have her catch his eye because it would be a good marriage uh, gave it to her to take to him so now I'm just rolling out the clay I and what this does I'll make the uh, rope out of rolled clay but what they'll do in production of the uh, bronze is they'll make it out of twisted bronze wire uh, so it looks like rope or braided rope okay now I gotta hook it on here I already got it going through his mouth Take it up under his shield. And I've already got it coming down here. All right, this clay is ready to go. And uh, I'll go put this video together and go to bed. Because <laughs> I only got three hours of sleep last night. And uh, I ain't tired yet, but I will be by the time I'm done doing the video. I've been working on this for an hour and a half now, so that's uh, not too bad. All right, everybody, wish me luck getting this to the gallery and hope I get there without crashing and having all the clays go smashing against the front seat. I did that once years ago back in 1998. I was driving to Bozeman. I had several bronzes in the back of my van and I hit a patchy area of uh, ice and flipped my van and ran in straight on into a cliff next to the road. 
and my van ended up on its top of my van. It's a miracle I didn't get killed by a flying bronze. Because one of them had a spear aimed right at my back. <laughs> well, anyway. I'll say goodnight, which is actually going to be tonight, but this morning, and so can't say good morning because it'll be nighttime before you see this, probably. All right, <laughs> good night, everybody. See you next time. I hope to be videoing the uh, uh, the gallery down there in Jackson Hole. It's it's about. I think it's less than 200 miles from here, but I can't remember how exactly. All right, good night. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.